Hello everyone, my name is Eric DeBlander, and today I'll be giving a brief introduction to Virginia Henderson's nursing need theory, along with the help of Aracelis Perez and Alec Barton. So what is Virginia Henderson's theory and who was Virginia Henderson? Virginia Henderson was born in November of 1897 and had seven other siblings. She received her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from the Army School of Nursing at Walter Reed Hospital, and she worked as a social reform nurse at a nonprofit organization in New York City called the Henry Street Settlement, and she, became, and she came to develop her own personal theory of nursing there. Henderson's theory proposed that the most important aspect of patient care was the patient's independence or the patient being able to progress in their health after they are discharged from the hospital. Virginia Henderson categorized the role of the nurse in one of three categories. Substitutive, being that the nurse completely substitutes the client in the said action or the said task. Supplementary, where the nurse partially assists the client in the action. Or complementary, where the nurse assists the client as little as they possibly can throughout the action. Henderson also grouped 14 stipulations of human needs, which she believed would guide the nurse in coordinating their care. Henderson emphasized on a patient's post-care abilities improving so that in the future they would be able to care for themselves and reach lesser roadblocks. So the 14 nursing need theory stipulations that Henderson came up with was normal respirations, adequate food and drink, elimination of body waste, the maintenance of desirable postures, adequate sleep and rest, hygienic and suitable outerwear, maintenance of body temperature, keeping the body clean and well-groomed, avoidance of dangers in the environment, communication with others, practicing one's faith, holding a sense of accomplishment in one's daily life, participation in extracurricular activities, and to satisfy the patient's curiosity. So what are the key concepts of the nursing care theory? So the major focus in this theory is ensuring that all 14 of the patient's human needs are met and helping the patient become as independent as they can. There's an emphasis placed on the patient's independent as I'm sorry, there is an emphasis placed on the patient's independent independence as this prevents one from becoming ill again or developing a condition again. Henderson defined her meta-paradigm concepts through the use of these stipulations. As defined by Henderson, a person was the nurse's responsibility to provide with adequate care, along with meeting all of their needs and respecting them in their spiritual needs, their emotional needs, and their physical needs. A person's health was seen as their independence to complete tasks without the intervention of a nurse. Although the environment, the de- I'm sorry, although the definition of the environment was not explicitly defined, one can see from the meta paradigm stipulations that the environment was seen or was seen to be clean, hygienic, that there was a maintenance of temperature, there was an avoidance of dangerous situations. nursing aspect of the meta paradigm or the nursing concept of the meta paradigm was defined as the nurses the nurses obligation and responsibility to assist the client in a daily activities while also helping the client become more independent while also helping the client to become physically less ill Overall, Henderson's nursing need theory and the meta-paradigm concepts were 
largely geared towards independence and creating a healthy environment. Switching gears now to holism and caring, a uh, key point of holism in Henderson's nursing theory is reaching the client's independence as quickly as possible. So basically, Henderson focused her perspective on holism based on the client's independence. She believed it is a nurse's job to care for the client by helping them reach independence as quickly as possible. She says that nursing is a combination of a nurse's heart, head, and hands. When they are not used together, they don't have the same value. Using this combination results in quick and effective results getting the client back to good health. Moving on to Henderson's perspective on caring, her theory involves caring and it does so by using patient-centered care. Caring is demonstrating, demonstrated by using empathic understanding. Her perspective is that the nurse must get inside the client's skin to know what their needs are. This shows empathic understanding because it shows that the nurse really wants to understand what the patient's going through and help them the best ability they can by putting themselves in the client's shoes and caring for them as they need. Moving on to Henderson's theory in nursing practice, some of the key points here are Henderson's 14 basic needs in caring, using patient-centered care, and helping the client reach independence. Henderson's theory is used in nursing practice. She identifies 14 basic needs in nursing care. Some of these include breathing normally, eating and drinking adequately, sleeping and resting, and communicating with others in expressing emotion, needs, fears, and opinions. Henderson expresses that these are things nurses should be doing for themselves to be able to provide the best care. Her theory is also demonstrated by nurses using patient-centered care and wanting to understand the needs of clients as well as providing the main focus which is getting the client who is dependent on the nurse's care to become independent as quickly as possible. So for example, this is a scenario that can demonstrate Henderson's theory in nursing. So this is a clinical situation that involves our, our client, Andrew. He's 64 years old and he comes in with a terrible cold. The nurse understands that Andrew's, what Andrew is feeling because he also has, she's also had a similar cold to this. Andrew's had um, to be on bed rest for about a week. He starts to have pain in his chest because of all the coughing he's been doing. Um, he's not independent, so the nurse tries every day to take steps to, be, to help him become independent. The nurse checks vital signs, makes sure those are stable. The nurse walks him through breathing techniques and make sure he can breathe on it. He can breathe breathe on its own, his own. The nurse makes sure Andrew can walk on his own as well as eat. The nurse provides much more care to get Andrew independent as fast as possible. Once the nurse sees that he is independent and he has reached that goal, Andrew will be able to head home. So some points I want to point out here are while the nurse is providing care. She's putting herself in Andrew's situation. This is using empathic understanding. The nurse helps Andrew with the help he needs to reach independence. This is done because clients need the help of nurses to reach the goal of independence. The nurse will make sure she is performing the 14 basic needs as described in Henderson's theory. Uh, this is so the nurse can perform the best care possible for the client. Assisted euthanasia. Assisted euthanasia is when a physician or a medical provider administers a lethal dose of a medication or provides a lethal dose of a medication to a patient with full knowledge that they intend to end their own life. This is a controversial subject because it is an admirable position to hold that a terminally ill patient that is suffering should be able to end their own life peacefully and at a time of their choosing. However, groups like the American Medical Association do not want to be associated with such practices because they believe the primary objective of medicine is to do no harm. Virginia Henderson's beliefs on this matter would be difficult to infer. However, in her nursing thesis, Henderson states the unique function of a nurse is 
to assist the individual sick or well in the performance of those activities contributing to health or recovery, or to a peaceful death. Peaceful death is highlighted here because it's what we need to focus on. Henderson would most likely want to look at the context of each case. For example, Henderson would most likely find the assisted euthanasia of an 86-year-old diagnosed with terminal bone cancer to be ethical. The patient should not be made to su be made to suffer if it is not necessary. However, there are other cases like that of 29-year-old Dutch woman Aurelia Bowers. Bowers was granted permission for assisted euthanasia for a quote-unquote terminal mental illness. It is difficult to believe Henderson would find such an action to be moral since Browers could reasonably expect to live another 50 years. Were all therapeutic avenues of treatment explored? What sort of precedent would this set for other mentally ill people? It is also important to note that patients who are granted permission for assisted euthanasia are usually provided with a lethal dose of a medication. This is important because on ethical grounds, it means that the patient is ending their own life and that the physician can sort of shed the guilt knowing that they didn't commit a murder. And this sort of factors into the legal reasoning as well in that providing a medication would most likely result in an accessory to suicide charge instead of a first degree murder charge if the physician was ever charged by a hostile state. Spotlight. Informed or voluntary consent. Informed or voluntary consent is required before a patient can be treated. It requires three things. Firstly, it must be written. Secondly, it must be designated for a specific procedure. And thirdly, it must be signed by the patient. It is also important to note that the patient has the right to refuse treatment at any time before or during the procedure. Virginia Henderson states in her nursing thesis that the nurse is responsible for the performance of those activities contributing to health or recovery. He, meaning the patient, would perform if he had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge. So let's talk about a scenario. A diabetic comes into the emergency room acting strangely and not answering qu questions appropriately. Henderson would agree that the nurse would be able to sign the patient's informed slash voluntary consent waiver and administer dextrose intravenously because the patient is incapacitated and would and would most likely agree to that treatment if he was of sound mind and body. In other words, the nurse is performing the activity contributing to health or recovery the patient would otherwise perform if he had the necessary strength. 